So Sister Silverine, once again, thank you for making time to have these discussions with me about the issues of parenting and especially the issue of parental alienation. As you know, this program, or well, the audience will know by now that this program is brought to them by the Parental Alienation Awareness International Network. And one thing that stands out, I think, is the betrayal of the family structure. Mm. Now, what I mean, what I'm meaning by the betrayal of the family structure is where there is, obviously, there's the marriage and there's the the child coming into that particular family and then there's the decision to divorce or to separate. Mm. And so there is, at this point, when the parental alienation takes place, that people consider the marriage Mm -hmm. to be family rather than realizing a family is a mother, a father, and Mm. children. Mm -hmm. Why do you think people are not realizing this, that a family is not a a legal document, which is called the marriage certificate, Mm. that we are are looking at pen and paper rather than relationships? Why do you think people are like this now? I would assume that, you know, because there is a change in a generational gap, it's a change in the way each generation thinks. So what we would see like 30, 40 years ago, is not the same thing we are seeing today. So there is a difference in the way every generation think. And so because we think differently, we assume things to be different. We don't expect it to be just as it was before my time. And so I have noticed that every generation that comes, they are less, or if you want to call it, um, they're growing up with less values as the generations before. I remember in my times when I used to go to school, especially high school, we never heard of violence in the school. But this current generation, we were hearing about violence in almost every school. Why is it so, why is there so much violence in the schools? Why is there so much violence in the minds? It's clearly showing that hmm, the way this generation thinks, is completely different to past generations. And uh, from my personal observance also, I have seen where even though my grandparents or great-grandparents did not have all the luxury in their life, they were still happy. They were contented. They live in peace. They were satisfied with whatever they have. But this current generation that we are faced with It's a totally different mindset of individuals. And they are so different that they think that the way they think is the best way. But we could see it's not like that, definitely not like that. We can see there is a big difference, very, very big difference. But according to your question, Each individual, yes, is different. But at the same time, all the values are the same values. Love is the same. Appreciation, acceptance are all the same values. Why is there a lack of values in today's society? Which leads to all these bad relationships. Hmm? Okay. Two individuals get married for whatever reason. And uh, for whatever reason, the marriage did not last. There is separation or divorce or whatever you call it. 
But that, that communion, that union brought about a third individual in the relationship. So a family means a bonding of love. Family means where there is love. A family means where there is acceptance, there is appreciation of each other. And do you know it doesn't have to be anything to do with blood? A parent or two individuals could adopt a child and give that child so much love and nurturing and attention. That child could be a beautiful shining star. In comparison to a child that is with his real family and not receiving that love and appreciation and acceptance that he needs, but on the contrary turns out to be a not very good individual in society. So family has nothing to do with blood relations. A family is where there is a bonding of love, where there is acceptance and appreciation of each individual who are living together. Or even not living together. Because you could have a very strong bond with someone who you are not living with and consider that individual to be your family. More than someone who you are living with where there is no love. So family means what? Family means where there is sharing, not physical sharing. We share love. We share acceptance. We accept each other for who we are, for who you are, for who I am. And we nurture that love, we nurture that bonding. And for me, a family unit is the most important thing for any individual to grow into in a healthy way. If you want your child to grow with a healthy mindset, then grow that child where there is love. There is true bonding. There is acceptance and appreciation of the individuals who make up this family. If you are living with individuals who have no knowledge of what is love, what is appreciation, what is acceptance, then you're not living with a family. You are living with some members, maybe. Even friends have so much loving bond with each other that sometimes a friend could be considered more of a family to you than someone of your own blood. So who is the family? A family means where there is true love and acceptance of each other. Where do these values come from? Mm -hmm. As you say, where well, we are Very good. in values. Very good. So each individual, each child that was born, they were born with all these beautiful values. As I mentioned in one of the past episodes, that you never have to teach a child how to love his or her parent. It's a natural quality, it's a natural instinct, natural value hmm, to give love. We have never been taught how to love, you know, but we love. We know how to love. Even though we were not taught how to love, we know how to love. We love each other, right? Hmm? We may even love ourselves. So you don't have to teach how to love because that is natural. Even peace is natural. And so every human soul, every human being, have all these beautiful qualities and values within them. You don't have to teach it. How many times the children now learning to go to school, now learning you know, about outside world, and the parents have to be telling the child, well, don't let your friends take your lunch, for example. Don't let your friends um, interfere with your books and your bag and your pencils and your crayons. How many times? We hear that from our parents, right? Each time you tell your child, don't allow your friend to take your lunch, for example. 
don't allow anyone to interfere with your books and your pens. And what are you teaching that child? Mind you, every child was born to love. They know about love. They are very kind. They know about sharing. They are generous at heart. Hmm? They have all the beautiful qualities within them. But when you tell your child, don't allow some other children to interfere with your things, then what are you planting in the mind of that child? Selfish. Selfishness. Selfishness means hmm, no sharing. It means you're interfering with the kindness of this child. If this child had a generous nature, a kind nature, you are interfering with the beautiful value that this child has in him. So what you're doing to that individual? You are destroying the values. You are destroying all the good qualities of this child. So naturally, every human being have all these beautiful qualities in them. And they can bring it out when they need it. For example, if you, when you leave here, you see someone get into an accident. Even without knowing that individual, you will feel that you want to help. This is the beautiful nature of human beings. Beautiful nature means you have kindness. You have love. You know what is to be generous. You have all the good qualities. And that will come out in, in due time when it's needed. So where did it come from? It did not come from anywhere. It is already there within you. And so the reason why we practice meditation is that through meditation, we are actually enhancing these beautiful qualities that we already have. The qualities are there within us, but because we are not using it, we think we don't have it. How many times we find ourselves saying, you know, I cannot tolerate that individual. Or I don't have patience with that individual. How many times? But do you know that you really do have that quality to tolerate? Do you know that you really do have patience? But you are not allowing yourself to exercise that power. It is not coming from outside. Tolerance won't come from outside. No, patience won't come from outside. Love is not coming from outside. Everything is already within you. And so situations and circumstances that, that come before you gives you the opportunity to use that power at that time. So sometimes you may need to use love. Sometimes you may need to use kindness. Sometimes you may need to use tolerance. It is within you. You were born with it. And so because you were born with it, no one cannot steal it from you. You have all the goodly qualities, all the divine qualities that you need. And so when you do meditation, you learn to enhance and to allow these qualities to emerge. Now, as in your example of um, of having a, if you see someone in an accident, and you naturally have the the Feeling. urge to help them, mm -hmm. a lot of us don't. We we may say, okay, let somebody else handle that, or that's their problem. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. So then, where has such an individual's love and compassion yeah. gone, and how mm -hmm. do what you mentioned, meditation. Yes. Mm -hmm. But from the point of not caring at all, mm -hmm. so they, they probably they won't even realize that they need to develop mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. But from such an individual, what happens to bring a person to that point? Mm -hmm. And how being at that point? You know, there is a saying, use it or lose it. Have you ever heard? Yeah. So it means that, if you don't use all those beautiful powers and virtues and values that you have, even though you have it, 
it is not in use, it is of no value to you. So you don't think that you need to use it. You have it. You have all the powers, you have all the virtues, you have all the values, you have everything that you need. But if you're not using it, what will happen to it? Use it or lose it, which means even though it is there, it is not active. So because it's not active, that beautiful power of kindness to help will not come out in the time of need. So even though you have it, it is as though it doesn't exist for you. So you're not kind. You cannot show that kind of love or that affection, what people need at that moment. Because we have not been using the powers that we have. It's not that we don't have, we do have it. Every human soul have all these beautiful qualities and powers that we need. But as I said before, if you don't use it, you lose it. So even though it's there within you, because these are the innate qualities of every human being, because it is not in use, it is not present. It is not there when you need it. That does not mean to say that you don't have it. Use it or lose it. Now for the individual watching this program and who actually don't know that they are uncompassionate, what are some of the signs of such an individual? So they are they not don't... uncompassionate. Yeah. That, yeah, so that they don't, they don't realize mm -hmm. that they lack compassion. Yeah. Or they don't realize that they lack loving nature or care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They think that, oh, you know what, I'm a loving person, but they are arguing with everyone around them or selfish or... Mm -hmm. But they believe mm -hmm. that they are a loving and caring person. Mm -hmm. Can you state some of the symptoms mm -hmm. besides the arguing and the selfishness? Probably they lack any real substantial relationship. Mm -hmm. Probably those around them don't like them. Mm -hmm. Can can you state the life of the, the symptoms of such an individual? Mm -hmm. So even though every human being have these beautiful virtues and values in them, yes, you may find someone who is like very difficult to deal with. He may not be loving, he may not be kind, he may not be sweet, he may not be even generous. He does not have the sharing nature. And it might be difficult to be around this person or to live with this person. But you know what positivity does? Positivity means, in my mind, I know this individual lack these qualities, which means even though he have it, he doesn't even know he have it. So what is my duty to do? If I am in touch with this person, I understand that this person doesn't even know himself. He doesn't even know that he have the power to love, or he have the power of patience, or he have the power of tolerance. What is my duty? I'm not going to think that this one is like that. And I quickly put a label on him. He is like that. So I put him away in, my, in some book. He's not in my, my book anymore, as we say here. That is not going to help neither him or neither me. What is my duty? My duty is that even though I have recognized that this individual is like that, means he is not awakened as yet to understand that, you know, I have these qualities. So my duty would be that my every thought towards this person should be so positive, so clean, and so pure, that this positive, clean, and pure vibrations, which are energies, reaches that individual in such a way that someday he may realize that, you know, I have realized that I have never been really loving, very caring, or generous to people. But, you know, I do have love inside, but I don't know how to use it. So your positive vibrations, your positive nature and behavior towards this individual 
begins to help him hmm, to open up his eyes and know that, you know, I do have these qualities. But I was never able to display it even to the people who loved me so much. So what positivity does, it starts awakening in another individual their goodness. And this is the beauty of positivity and positive thinking. So now <laughs> I invite you to a few minutes of meditation, reflection. When I think about myself, I think about my own positive qualities, my virtues, my values, and understand that I have all these beautiful qualities. And as I understand I have these qualities, these virtues and these values, I begin to understand that I need to use them at the right time. When I need to give love, when someone needs my attention, I give them love and attention when they need it. When I need to be kind, when I need to be generous, or when I need to tolerate these powers, these values should come out, should emerge at that time. And so as I understand that I do have these qualities within me, I begin to be aware of myself. And in this awareness, I understand that I need to allow these powers to awaken. I need to allow these powers to emerge from within and take and become present in my thoughts, my words, in my actions, so that my every thought, my every word, and my every action starts becoming positive, pure, and loving. And these pure, positive, and loving thoughts and feelings towards myself will start creating a healing process inside of me. And by simply appreciating, accepting, and loving myself for who I am, a healing process begins. And so I'm able to heal myself from whatever bitterness, whatever anger, whatever feelings of remorse or vengeance. I heal myself. And as I heal myself, this pure, peaceful, and loving nature of mine starts becoming present in my thoughts, my words, and my actions. Thank you.
Ampex Limited, Networking Societies for a Better Future.